have the segmentation of uh, uh, nucleus, uh, uh, um, many nuclei uh, at the basis of the, of the uh, cortex obtained exactly through the same way, exploiting the inner coherence of this uh, nuclei, because each cell in the nuclei is participating to the same function, and hence has exactly the same response in CAT, in, in absorption, uh, or in the resonance, magnetic resonance. Okay. And now I will have a sequence of such segmented object. It's a tumor, my tumor. After action of my algorithm, I have, yes, this uh, uh, gradient enhancement cis segmentation of the boundary. There is, after enhancement, two regions, the inner region of the tumor and the external region of the tumor, corresponding to, uh, know, the inner region has been segmented here automatically, only by thresholding. We can put cis segmentation in the first slide, the first NMR uh, image, and we have a good uh, uh, quality segmentation. We can make that for the external region corresponding to a, uh, a compression still healthy probably uh, brain tissue but compressed by the tumor okay it's a, another method using not a neural network but a pd equation but the results are the same we can also extract on the gray level on the gray landscape very interesting feature that is the extraction of the crest line and talvec line of the gray landscape it is very interesting for the matching because in the, in the future, in some minutes, I will try to match cis objects on atlas objects. And I will use subsingularities of the gray landscape, that is, for example, top of the peaks, saddle points, or singular lines like crest line or Talvec lines. OK, it is a, the extraction of Talvec lines. So, um, I'm sorry, it's a completely crazy, uh, but it, it's, it's probably my slides, but uh, I'm, I, I have not, not, not those slides, I, I don't know. Okay, I continue, I continue. You can, after contouring in 2D, smoothing like my bones, the tumor, for example, and represent this bone in the classical environment, NMR environment, with the initial uh, NMR slices. The problem is it's very difficult to make a lecture about images without slides. And uh, oh. not images, object coming from the individual, but reference image in order to put a semantics in the object coming from NMR or coming from CAT. And we have in particular computerized, digitized a well-known atlas of the brain, Schattenbrand atlas. Each slice of the atlas, by each slice, we have contoured systematically the object of interest through an interactive way to contour, to help uh, it's a neurosurgeon who has made that with, with us. Okay. We have control. After the neurosurgeon, by using a false color code as indicated, important region, for example, for stereotactic uh, gesture and uh, strategies, he has uh, defined the important region, noble region. Uh, you have to avoid during the stereotactic uh, uh, strategy putting an electron or uh, uh, making a uh, puncture, a biopsy puncture, for example. And he has selected with this uh, color code other zone you can pass during this uh, procedure. Okay, it's now, for example, a 3D representation of the object segmented. Uh, from the fr uh, from the atlas, and uh, I have here a collection of uh, of nuclei. Bon, for example, uh, it's uh, the striata terminalis here. Bon, I have a big collection of structure in 3D belonging to the atlas. It's a uh, bon. I, 
I giving some example is the optic nerve. Uh, it's a uh, noyau codé, uh, uh, co uh, codal uh, nucleus, it's uh, nucleus ventro intermediaris, internus et externus, both, the both. So practically we are segmented and we are able to represent in 3D. It's also the VIM. It's also the VIM. It's the VIM uh, externus here. The VIM internus. Okay, we have the collection of all objects of interest of the brain. And now I will show in which way we can we can fit, we can match these different uh, object segmented coming from the individual and coming uh, from the atlas. And it's an example, first example of, uh, of matching with a twisted torus, 3D torus, and we are uh, trying to match this torus with two X-ray uh, conic projection, a projection on a horizontal plane and a projection on a sagittal vertical plane. And progressively the adaptation on the uh, uh, horizontal plane is obtained by displacing the torus, it's an automatic uh, procedure, algorithm. The final fit is obtained here, yeah. And by using the horizontal and vertical projection, if I am representing the fit in 3D, okay, the object is in place corresponding to this uh, contour. Alors, for example, if you want to have the same referential during an operation, during an operation you have in the, uh, in the theater, in the surgical theater, you have an X-ray able to have, to, to give the red contours, and it's possible to fit the referential during the operation with the referential in the NMR or in the CAT uh, acquisition by using such techniques, by fitting the contour obtained by a conic projection on a vertical and on an horizontal plane. It's an example of uh, fitting of the, uh, in green, it's uh, the same VIM obtained on the atlas. In red, it's a VIM segmented from the NMR uh, imaging. And it's uh, the progressive fitting using the same techniques. And at the end of the operation, we have a perfect uh, fitting. We have selected on the boundary, on our polynomial spline boundary, we have selected certain points in order to, to show the, the, the structure. And, and the matching is perfect between the atlas and the real object. Okay, our final goal is to uh, uh, robotize completely the, the stereotactic uh, uh, st strategy for uh, puncture, for putting electrodes, etc. And we have now an experiment uh, on more than uh, now uh, uh, 400 patients. For example, for the Parkinson cure, uh, the system is able to implant automatically until six electrodes in a subcortical structure in order to, after stimulate uh, at a certain frequency this structure in order to suppress uh, final tremor in the movements of uh, Parkinson. Okay, a another fit uh, which can e interest you is the following. I'm sorry, the object of interest is, uh, yeah, below. No. It, it's an acquisition of the uh, skin surface through a laser acquisition. You have a laser ray which is taking at each iteration of the laser ray a part of the surface, the, the skin surf, uh, surface of the head, for example, for you. After we can represent, uh, we can represent in uh, uh, a skeletalized way, like for my bone at the beginning, my, my, my wrist was represented through a skeletal uh, display, or you can represent that continuously. It's not the back 
but it's a thorax represented continuously and acquired through a laser acquisition. It's exactly the, the, the same terminal file in the computer is exactly the same as these objects we have in each point, the best polynomial fitting locally the surface. And uh, this file can be used after to, uh, to make the matching. It's an assay of matching with a visual control between the NMR skin, the NMR skin is in blue, and the, the skin obtained by laser acquisition is in, uh, in orange. And we can check, for example, the position of the patient on the operation table, for example, for you, the position of your patient under a meg or, a, or another device, imaging device, we can check that on a screen. Another application, for example, we, we have processed is to put screws in the, in the vertebral pedicule. And to put that, we have the 3D representation of the vertebra obtained from CAT. We have determined a certain strategy of putting a screw. We have the real 3D obtained from uh, donc, uh, the, the CAT. And we can obtain by video or laser acquisition only <coughs> the image not on the whole vertebra, but of the uh, uh, apophysis. Uh, the, the, the last apophysis we can uh, feel here are uh, apophysis epineuse, uh, spine apophysis. I don't remember the name in, uh, in English. You can, the, the surgeon is unable, in fact, to dissect the whole vertebra because. Uh, uh, it's very the ribs because etc. The, the, the uh, thoracic cage. It's, it's impossible to dissect the wall, but he, he is dissecting dissecting only the spine apophysis, acquiring that by laser acquisition or by video, making a matching with my uh, 3D. That is the, the common representation of my 3D uh, coming from NMR and coming from the video. We have a control on the screen. We have also a least square criterion <laughs> susceptible to be calculated and uh, uh, to be uh, uh, visible on the, on the monitor. And when the fit is perfect, you can have on the monitor the 3D, the real 3D. You can follow, if you have your black and decal in order to put the screw in the vertebra, you can have the prolongation, the extension of the trajectory on the monitor and to adapt interactively, for example, uh, your tool and uh, to define the, the, the most precise strategy. Bon. All the procedures here are the same. Firstly, a segmentation, segmentation of real objects in the individual, segmentation of reference objects in the atlas. The matching permits the, to put a semantics on the objects coming from NMR or coming from SCAT. That, uh, uh, that render possible to put, for example, with the false color code, a certain uh, level of uh, importance uh, or avoiding of objects if you are to, to, to put a, a, a to, to make a puncture or to put an electron, you have surely certain object to avoid. Donc, uh, by matching with Atlas, you can put a certain semantics. And after segmentation and matching, you can act or you can represent for you, uh, uh, for example, by using the, the head skin, you can represent a common display, you can to have a common display of your functional uh, mapping and of the anatomic mapping. Okay, I am, I am finished. Yes, sorry. time, I would say. Uh, are there any questions concerning this presentation? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have to congratulate you about your lecture, but there are a lot of uh, ideas on that. Uh, can I put just one question, please? You saw us about uh, an MRI with uh, a tumor. Yeah. It was probably a meningioma. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, all around grows plenty of edema. Yeah. And you said that uh, on analyzing this line, there are some straight, uh, straight lines and some waved lines. And uh, as we know, the wet matter in this region have lines, had uh, fibers, straight or waved. Do you think that your ana uh, analyzed results are the same as the anatomical ones, yeah. or they are different? Yeah, we, we have a, a systematic comparison with the anatomical uh, piece of, of tumor the, the surgeon has extracted after the operation because this tumor has been operated. And in fact, in general, the inner part we have segmented correspond in general in the tumor. But in the surrounding of the tumor, there is a phenomena of edema, etc., you have mentioned. And the second zone, having also an homogeneity but at different gray levels than the central zone, correspond to this edematid, etc., region and compressed region. And the problem of the surgeon is to calculate, in fact, the volume between the central zone and this external zone. Bon, I, I will surely uh, say something not, not, so, not, so, not so true because I am not a neuros, neurosurgeon, but we are able to calculate this volume because we have exactly the contour. It's not a problem to calculate this volume between the central part and this external part. There is probably, we are studying that now, there is probably a correlation with the faculty of recuperation after extracting the tumor, certain uh, faculty, uh, uh, the tumor can provoke uh, sensorial or uh, motor uh, uh, deficits, etc. And the faculty of recuperation is surely uh, correlated. Bon, I have no, no uh, statistical uh, um, study to, to, to prove that, but it's surely in relation with the importance of this edematid volume in the surroundings of this tumor. And now we are calculating systematically this volume surrounding the central part of the tumor in order to improve the pronostic of the, of the neurosurgeon and permit uh, by not to predict exactly the recuperation of all uh, uh, deficits, but to have a certain idea of this recuperation. But it's true, this anatomy through uh, NMR well, is uh, in general, not exactly conform with, with the final uh, piece uh, of, the, of the final tumor extracted by the neurosurgeon, but it has to, yeah, it's, 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 it's near in general, it's very near. There was another question? No. Okay, so thank you, Dr. De Bonjour. Now we move to the next paper, Dr. Garcia de Leon. in epilepsy. At the present time, uh, we are assisting to uh, an increasing uh, and, uh, use of uh, uh, neuroimage uh, techniques. And as neurophysiologists, we must stress the importance of uh, some uh, neurophysiological techniques in order to assess uh, about the uh, possible uh, functional disorder the, in cognitive function in, in epileptic. Uh, the um, uh, disorder in cognitive function in epileptic uh, has been uh, controverted, but uh, now there is a general consensus uh, about um, the existence of this kind of disorder. 15% uh, of uh, epileptic, 10% uh, of epileptic suffer uh, from uh, intellectual deficits and uh, about 15% uh, uh, has uh, uh, some uh, deterior um, psychological deterioration. But uh, also uh, for the remaining group, uh, 
some authors as uh, in England, Corbett and Store, Trimble, etc. And in Finland, uh, and the Libanainen uh, has studied the existence of uh, some uh, cognitive dysfunction uh, in uh, some uh, domain as the perception, as the uh, 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 memory, uh, attention, etc. Uh, well, the, uh, to assess about the uh, oh, an another uh, controversial point is the etiology of cognitive deficit in epileptic. Because uh, for some authors, as uh, Gas thought, uh, the more important is the neurological lesion that accompany or induce the epilepsy. Some other uh, authors uh, um, imply the uh, seizure. And uh, for some other, the more important uh, for, the, uh, for this uh, uh, cognitive uh, function disorder uh, is the uh, antiepileptic drug effects. Uh, to uh, evaluate the um, uh, cognitive uh, uh, deficit, the, the, con the cognitive function deficit in epileptic uh, is an, uh, uh, an easy uh, task. Uh, if we uh, use uh, uh, psychodiagnostic texts, uh, we uh, found that uh, the mm, tests are affected, uh, the performance in the tests are affected by the seizure, uh, also by the, uh, the effect of antiepileptic drugs, and uh, finally uh, for a characterial disorder of the subject that uh, sometimes uh, are mm, uh, not uh, very cooperative. Uh, we have intent uh, use uh, uh, psychophysiological test and neurophysiological test in order to respond to uh, some question. As psychophysiological test, we have uh, used the reaction time, the simple uh, reaction time, and uh, the two uh, flash uh, threshold. And as neurophysiological test, the visual evoked potential and auditory event related potential. The use of uh, this kind of uh, psychologic, psychophysiological and neurophysiological tests uh, uh, permit us uh, to improve the behaviorist model that uh, has been so used in, in psychology and um, postule that uh, the uh, brain is a black box and in this way they uh, use different uh, kind of experimental situation or stimula stimulation paradigm paradigma and uh, uh, study uh, finally the response but uh, we, uh, without consider uh, the, the, the brain and the uh, mechanism uh, uh, of the brain. With the bucket potential, we can go inside the black box, and uh, in a very schematic uh, presentation, we can say that early potential are related to integrity of sensory pathway and physical characteristic of the stimuli, mid latency potential uh, related to perception, attention, and selective filtering of information, and even rated potential related to uh, uh, psychological significance of a stimuli and uh, process of information analysis and making a decision. Well, uh, the first uh, slide, please. We have studied a, a group of uh, epileptic and a group of control, and uh, one of the, the first studies the, the, the reaction time. Uh, we can see the, the control and uh, some uh, sample of uh, epileptic in a generalized uh, primary ep uh, epilepsy with polytherapy and with psychological deterioration. In this uh, way, we can see that uh, there are, there are uh, an irregularity in the response that uh, usually is uh, the, the, the reaction time are um, uh, more prolonged and there are a great variability. And, uh, for example, here we have uh, a gener a primary generalized uh, epilepsy with uh, absence, but uh, without any um, deterioration and without any uh, 
uh, difference in the um, reaction time, time and uh, uh, some other example of a partial epilepsy. Following the, the next slide, please. <coughs> well, and this is the, uh, the, the resume in, in a uh, control. We study the, the, P, uh, the, the visual evoked potential and we uh, focus our attention uh, in the P100 and we uh, do the, the event related potential. This is uh, the potential the, the evoked by uh, stimuli without any uh, psychological signification. And this is with an off ball paradigm that the subject must uh, do this, the distinction between two uh, tones uh, uh, very close to the threshold. And finally, we have the, uh, the, the reaction time. Well, uh, this is uh, uh, an anabolic potential in, in a generalized uh, epilepsy, uh, generalized primary, uh, without any um, uh, anormality. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> well, Sorry. no, no, no it's, it's, <laughs> it's not a problem. Uh, well, we can uh, put another uh, more, and I will follow without uh, a slide. Yes, uh, for example, this is uh, uh, an HHE uh, uh, syndrome, it's, uh, 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 epilepsy, hemiconvulsion, and uh, uh, hemiplegia, uh, hemi 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 hemiparesia, uh, that show uh, the uh, uh, prolonged latency of P100 of P, uh, P, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, occipital region. Uh, next slide. No. Uh, no. Uh, grazie tante, Ferdinando. Noi co continuiamo. No, no. Yes. Uh, this is, uh, for, the, for example, uh, the, uh, the 